This is not as you said it would be, Dr. Jones. I got it back to you, didn't I? Yes, but for how long? First time, you know. Looks like a storm's coming. Good, that'll help us. you can get us out of this. Oh, relax, Great Cloud. Nobody's gonna come after us till this storm dies down. This is probably the most sacred relic of my people's past. Well, here's a sacred relic of my past. me of working my way through the University of Chicago. You planned that? No. No, I was a waiter. But that's an art in itself. You know, you don't start at the top. You work your way up, perfect your style, till you are at the top, like Colosimo's restaurant. Best food, best service, and best jazz in Chicago. I was crazy about jazz. <laughs> Jonesy, we got a problem here. Tell me we don't got a problem here. Oh, I ordered the Orso Buco. This looks like a fish to me. Jonesy will take care of it right away. And the next round of ice tea is on me. Hey, where's my fish? Here it is. Jones, wake up. Here's your Orso Buco. That's for the orchestra? Mm -hmm. King Oliver playing New Orleans when I was 12. You ever get to play with him? The person's talking to you, Sid. Huh? Kid, he jammed with the king when he was still in short pants. How come Sidney don't talk to people? Well, he talks to people he likes. He never talks to me. Yeah, goes to show you. Close the window, I'm soaking wet. The breeze is gonna give me pneumonia. I'm hot. Well, I'm freezing. Come on, Elliot, let's go out. I can't study tonight. You're crazy, it's midnight. I've got an eight o'clock accounting class. Let's go down to the Royal Gardens, catch one set. Get it. Elliot, just don't ask me to keep you comfy in another one of your aunt's dinners. You're such a square. Why, because I need a good night's sleep? You're the world's youngest stuffy old fart. I am not. I'm telling you as a pal, you're a 70-year-old kid. You need to loosen up. Now get your coat.
drums and his brother Johnny on clarinet. This is not like the Rosemont Cotillion. How you doing, gentlemen? What it'll be? Uh, two waters, please. coming in between the beats. Oh, yeah, that's what's different. There's the jazz rhythm syncopation and playing behind the beats. You can't tell me you think this is better than Mozart or Puccini. Elliot. <laughs> Who the heck is this? I think it's Jen. I thought you ordered water. I guess they gave us prohibition water. You know my brother-in-law works for the Bureau of Investigation. It would not look good for him if somebody saw me here. Relax, no one knows you're here. My parents would kill me. I believe it. Hey, watch yourself, Sorry, kid. sir, it was an accident. I don't like accidents. Come on, get out of here, you Sorry. Kid. Come on, get out. Elliot, get up. I lost my beanie. Get up. Hey, is this what you're looking for? Hey! Excuse me, can I please no, no, have no, a no, no, sir, sir. Excuse me. Gee, please. Come on. Hey, hey. Kill me. Hey. Behinds out of here. I want to see the backs of it. Do you hear me talking? We're going. We're leaving, sir. We're who's leaving. Who's messing this up here? These kids are busting up the place. That's who's messing. Sit, man. This is all really a big misunderstanding. Actually, it's an Do you know these kids? And this one. Yeah, Mimi and me and the Sid man were pals. We work at Coliseum's together. He'll vouch. I was going to throw him out of here, Sid. Fine by me. Get him out of here. Get your fuck out of here. I wanted to apologize about last night. We weren't there to make trouble. We just we just wanted to listen. You got a funny way of listening. The place got shut down last year because of riot. You think about starting another one? No, no. I... A little excitement I never heard no club. What you schoolboys doing hanging around the club in? For the music. I grew up listening to Tom Turpin, UB Blake, Jelly Roll Morton. I've got all Scott Joplin's music. When I went to New Orleans, my parents had to drag me away from Preservation Hall. I played there. And Liberty Hall? Mm hmm. And Pittman's? Yeah. Hey, that's now that's right. the place. Yeah. You're at the best then. I used to sit in the hotel window all night and just listen to the street musicians. Kids got a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Sid, man, you might as well accept this man's apology. Oh, he's gonna talk you all night. I think he might. Some people think Johnny Dodd's best on clarinet, but I know if you took him on in a cutting session, you'd blow him away. Now, that's butter, Sid. That's so much butter, you could butter all the bread in Chicago it with it. Well, I do hope you accept my apology. You play? Well, I took piano lessons when I was a kid, and I played some ancient flutes, panpipes. Panpipes? Kind of like a flute. Anything else? Well, in the army, I learned soprano sax. A little. Just... You say soprano sax, huh? Well, I didn't really get to play it much. I just started, kind of. <coughs> you have a soprano sax? Yeah, I just picked it up at a pawn shop. 
played around with it a little bit, but uh, I think I like those straight ones. <laughs> Good sound, but I can't get enough out of it. Needs a lot of lip. Give it a try. Me? <laughs> you said you played. Yeah, but... I figured anyone who loved jazz might want to fool around with playing. Sure. Are you sure? OK, wow. <laughs> Maybe someday I can jam with you. you practice a little bit. Yeah, you hold on to that baby and uh, play. OK. Club, see who's playing? No, going over to the Four Deuces to jam. Really? I bet you guys really smoke, huh? Man, we sizzle. Man, we sizzle so hot at the fire department parks outside. Well, I'd sure like to hear that. <laughs> Don't you got college stuff to do? Well, I'd rather hear you jam. And you keep your nose clean, no brawling. You bet. You bet. My nose will be so clean. I've never been to a speakeasy before. The only difference is that there, when you order a drink, you don't have to call it tea. And there she is. Hi, boys. How'd it go tonight? Pretty much the same as usual. <laughs> Where are you coming in? Uh, not tonight. Hey, but I'll see you Sunday, though, all right? Thanks, CJ. Bye, sis. Indiana Jones. I'm a waiter at Colosimos. The boy who started the fuss at the Royal at the end of your song. You don't like my singing? <clears throat> no, the fuss had nothing to do with your singing. Really, your singing is fabulous. Really? Well, to give anyone who thinks my singing is fabulous. Yeah. What do you want? Hank, it's us, the band. Hey, Sid, man. Hey, you go like that. Thanks, Al. Thanks a lot. Can I get a cola? A cola? A real cola. Jonesy, bring over a pitcher of lime and gin. A pitcher of lime and gin. Lime and gin? For the musician. Did you step it in fetching for the colors? Excuse me? Don't you think they're uppity enough? They're my friends. Careful who you choose for your friends. Maybe you don't know how to stay out of trouble. Don't worry about me. Whoever said a good man was hard to find? Positively, absolutely, show sure was blind. I found the best that ever was. It's just some of the things he does. He shakes my ashes. Greases my griddle, yes. turns my butter, strokes my fiddle. My man is such a handyman. He flaps my flapjacks, cleans off the table, feeds the horses in my stable. My man. Long before dawn, busy trimming the hedges off of my lawn. My man is such a handyman. That's right. Oh.
think it's so good. It's got a lot to say. The more a man's got to say, the more complicated his music gets. Sydney ain't easy. He's Creole. He's too colored for the whites and not colored enough for the Negroes. So you don't belong either place. I think he's trying to find a place in the music. It's amazing. They just make it up as they go. You got the basics. You just gotta get loose. Artie puts the brass on the melody, and Sidney slides all over it with his own version. That sliding on the melody, you do with the clarinet, or you do with your voice. How about you trying to play a tune? Yeah, like this is jazz. There are no rules, it just flows. Well, just flow somewhere else. Party at Sigma Chi, free food. I gotta get to work. You got an hour. Come on, Susie Hill's gonna be there. Susie. Yeah, the cheerleader. Hey, you know her. Will you introduce me to her? Come on. to introduce you to my roommate, Elliot Ness. Hi, Susie. What's in your case? Oh, it's my saxophone. Sometimes I jam with the guys, you know, the band after work. Really? Yeah. I want you to play for me. All right. Gregory? What, what you mean right now? Indy plays the saxophone. I want him to play for me. Let him play a song with you. Jones, you play sax. Well, yeah, but hey, I can see you right in the middle of a set. Indy has played with professionals. Okay, Mr. Virtuoso, hop on up. You know, April showers. The April showers. Respectable party, bub. There, there, there's girls here. We don't like brothel music. Brothel music? This isn't brothel music. It's the Negro music, bub. It's not respectable. I said clear off. Toot toot tootsie. What were you doing? Jazz. Did you like it? No. She's really pretty, isn't she? She said she didn't like my music. So she has taste. <laughs> from Delaware weren't in charge, you could really shut the place up. Yeah, maybe. Does I sound okay? Yeah. That's the best music I ever heard in this house. Thanks. It's time to make a penny. 
Yeah, I guess I impressed some people this afternoon. Yeah? Yeah, um, I was just thinking maybe you'd let me jam with you tonight. You were thinking that. <laughs> One of the Negro waiters there said I played the best music he's ever heard at that house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, if you're that good, I guess we better hear it. Really? Okay. Jones, Jones, table is seven, huh? Aye, aye, Captain. Come on. to society. Put that honey down. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Sorry I wasted your time. <laughs> it wasn't a waste of time, kid. A good laugh is never a waste of time. <laughs> you said you've been practicing. Oh, I have. What you've been practicing? Jazz. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> what was I doing wrong? You don't know the first thing about jazz. That's what's wrong. I love jazz. Well, that's fine. But if you want to play jazz, you got to know where you're coming from. <laughs> hey, he's coming from the wrong side of the track to start with. <laughs> you can play Happy Birthday in jazz, or you can play St. Louis Rag so straight it won't be jazz no more. Two basics that make jazz jazz. Rhythm and improvisation. Piano man, yeah. turkey in the straw, street time. That's the home, Jonesy. Now I'll see where you can go from there. Piano man played Caribbean. Put it all together. That's right. See, That's right. see here. Yeah. They got us colors, yeah. the French, the Spanish. Mm -hmm. They even got the daggone Creole. <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish, spiritual, street music, parades, carnival, uh, Mardi Gras, you name it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. the melting part of music is where jazz all began. That's right. That's right. Bit of everything in there, Jonesy. Yeah. You gotta listen to improvise. You gotta know where you are and what everyone else is doing. There's a reason. Maybe not a rule, but a reason for everything. Play a city. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. 
Sleep tight and don't let the arty bugs bite. Well, hell, you might have blown that sweet horn a bit out of shape. Don't be too hard on yourself. I'm 23 years old. I've been playing for 20 years. 20 years? My parents gave me a toy five when I started walking. When I was seven, I stole my brother's clarinet. Made the neighbors miserable, because I never quit blowing. Made my parents' life miserable, because I hardly ever went to school. Any who, anywhere I could learn from. And here I am, still working on it. Maybe I'll never get good enough. What's enough? You feel good playing the horn? Yeah, I did. Sit down. How's a baby learn to walk? <laughs> what? Me? My mama told me I went from one chair in the living room to another. Across the room, grab a chair. Across the room, grab a chair. Back, forth, forth, back. Then I run back and forth. Then I hop. Then I jump. But I got the basics of walking first. But you get up from crawling and start running. <laughs> no. Way to get confident is to learn one thing at a time. I got a tune for you. Take time, learn the rudimentals. Take one, two, note backwards and forwards. Then we'll talk about making jazz. Hey, kid, watch where you're going. This marks the start of the colored people's beach.
<laughs> Everybody knows you. Yeah, I come here for inspiration. You know all them Haitian and Cuban and African riffs? That's part of jazz. Down here. Hey, Sydney, how you doing? I think it's the biggest party, if you ask me. And this is where I've come to learn gospel. Take your hat off, boy, you in church. seat here, Mr. Williams. Nobody ever sits down. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is my friend Jonesy, uh, Goldie's daddy, uh, Jones? mama, and a brother, CJ. Well, let's get home before the whole neighborhood bores holes in Jonesy's back. I think they've never seen a white person before. Potatoes, Mrs. Williams. Lord, all week I dream about your cooking. You tell that to CJ. You know I gotta fatten him up. He can't gain that weight back. He lost while he was overseas. CJ fought in the Great War. Yeah? I did too. Hmm. What unit? Well, I joined the Belgian Army in 16. I was infantry in Europe, then in Africa, then I joined the intelligence service. I didn't know you were a soldier, Jones. Machine gunner, second division. CJ was in Marbosch, France. Tough ground. That rats in France could take over the world. Yeah, well, the flies in Africa don't get there first. Yeah, it's amazing those critters survived all that gas. Maybe we should have fed them our rations. <laughs> or let them wear our boots, huh? <laughs> Easiest way to kill them might have been to put a helmet on them and call them soldiers. It's being back home that counts. Time heals wounds. Time changes things. Did you kill anyone? Well, there was a war. How many? It's hard to remember how many. Yeah, I thought I'd always remember, but I don't. One's enough to remember. It's that split second when you're alive and because of you, someone else is dead. You got lucky. They didn't. So many didn't. So many don't have to live with their memories. Coming home, going to college with kids who've never seen so much death. Sometimes it feels strange. And what don't feel right is going through all that, coming home and not having no job. Don't worry, you'll get a job. I've been pounding the pavement since I've been back. The right thing will happen over time. Time. Don't talk to me about time. I risk my neck for this country. They say we was fighting to keep this land of opportunity. Well, where's my opportunity? Booker T. Washington. And don't give me Booker T., Dad. Go on with your life, your work, keep your family together. Joe, please. And keep out of trouble. Well, getting in trouble might be the only way to change things around here. I won't have that talk, CJ. I don't want you in no more trouble. My father wanted me to accept the white folk murdering a little colored boy. But I couldn't. I was taught to fight. And I'm going to fight for what's right. The only way that they'll take notice is if you go out and beat the hell don't out of Don't you go bragging about being in that riot. That boy was not following the rules. Daddy, the boy was swimming. He got a cramp. He made the mistake of reaching out to a white folk's raft. And they threw stones at him. What kind of rules you want us to follow that says a boy can't try and save himself? It's not up to us to change the rules. Well, they ain't gonna give us nothing. We gotta demand change. Riots and violence are not the answer to nothing. We had to say enough, no more. 
You think that burning houses and breaking windows and killing on both sides is going to bring about a good change? The only change that's going to come from that is more heartache and anger and bigger and deeper canyons between the white folks and the black folks. And I am ashamed that my son took part in that violence. I thought you'd have had enough of that during the war. There are better ways. Mr. Jonesy is here to enjoy Sunday dinner with us. So, everybody, eat your food. King Oliver and Louis Armstrong in a cutting session, this is gonna be hot. Can't I go with you? It wouldn't be good, would it, Sidney? Not there. I like promise I won't ask to play. <laughs> Jonesy, this is a colored club. Sidney, you said that it didn't matter to you if it was a white or a colored who taught you music, as long as there was something to learn. I got a lot to learn. First sign of trouble, I'll leave. Come on. <laughs> Where's Louis Armstrong from? From New Orleans, where else? I can't wait. Hey, 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 you can't come here. It's a color club. Hey, 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 I don't give a damn. He's all right. He's all right. Other side. I want people to think you and me are together. Oh, okay. Gus, uh, give me a lemonade. Long tall tomato juice, Gus. What you having? Iced tea. Hey, Gus, you got one more person here. The tomato juice. Indiana Jones. Indiana. <laughs> Shit, you got your baby? Tonight we come to listen. Oh, no, man. You think I'm gonna let Goldie sit here on the behind? Uh-uh, Goldie. If this sweet man of yours doesn't have his clarinet, then you come up on that stage. Come on now. CJ. He's okay. He's a friend of mine. Gee, people gotta change. They always do. The worlds change, rulers change, even beliefs change. Yeah? How? Sometimes a natural disaster. Sometimes just a very wise person, a very evil person can change things. Most of all, wars. 
I don't want a war. I want change to come because it's right and everyone knows it's right. I'm gonna get myself into law school, even if it takes the rest of my life. Justice has to have its eyes open. I'm equal, Jonesy. So I want to be treated like it. And so we find that the conditions of war and of the warrior classes remain fundamentally unchanged in the 1,500 years that separate the Trojan Wars from the battlefields of Charlemagne. Jonesy, I'm going over to the Royal Gardens to listen to Goldie. You want to come? Oh, I don't know. When me and Elliot got thrown out, they said never to come back, so... I'll get you in. clarinet with you, Sydney? He's always got his clarinet with him. Maybe the Boucher would give us the pleasure of hearing him play. Go ahead, Sydney. Best I know on soprano sax. Thing is, he's the only one I know jazz and soprano sax. Uh, thought we'd get him up here for one song. Uh, it's his favorite song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Well, let's get him up here. His name is Jonesy, sax man. The man's calling you. He's crazy. I can't get up there. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, you can do it. Goldie, I'll help Jonesy up here. He might get a little lost along the way. Come on, Jonesy. Well, I think if you're gonna play, you better take that saxophone out, Jonesy. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star, you count it. Uh, 
Uh, you know this one. Just take the melody just like I heard you crying. Indy, you have a lecture in five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be a little quieter when you come in at four o'clock in the morning. Some of us like to sleep. And if you're gonna use my toothpaste too, put the cap back on, will you? Mm -hmm. Keep the sock off my bed. Okay, Elliot, okay. Look at this. Big tip for Mike the Pike. A hundred bucks. This will buy me five acres in Wyoming. Only 95 more to go. Cesarino. Si. Thank you, fam. Here's special art. Peso di filetto rapide. Look, did you talk to your uncle? Come over here. I want to show you something. Look, look at these tomatoes. And look at this. This is a sin. I won't slice this. I won't serve it. I'll talk to him now. Please. Anybody see my uncle? He's out front, Mr. Torrio. Thanks, kid. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Sydney for Shape Band. Come on. And now, with great pleasure, I would like to introduce my new wife, Dale Winter. Knock him dead. Everybody loves a baby. That's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby. Uncle Jim. Right. You know, Chesterino's not too happy in the kitchen. The lettuce is brown and the tomatoes are bruised. I mean, Mickey's getting very sloppy with his produce. So break all his fingers and find somebody with a green thumb. Isn't she great? Isn't she beautiful? They did it. They won the second game. Don't believe it. The Black Sox couldn't win a foot race with a turtle. <laughs> it's true. You guys always end up jamming at this place. Because this speakeasy is owned by Big Colosimo. Hey, Big Spider Beck, the Wonder Boy. Hi, Bix. Jones just said the Black Sox won. You kidding? It couldn't happen in this century. Hey, Al, the Sox won the second game of the doubleheader. Yeah, three to two. You hear that? Sox three, Yankees two. All right. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Yeah. 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 Two dollars, bro. Two dollars. Uh, not tonight, Jones. Tonight, we play in the blues. I can do that. You know how to play jazz. I said, tonight, we were playing the blues. I thought the blues was jazz. The blues is the blues. It's got its own sound. I call it the wannabe sound. I call it no one appreciate how good I am sound. And that's right, Faye. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. yeah. OK. It's the in-between sounds, the shading, wanting. It's the why does the world have to be this way sound. It's the disillusion difference between jazz and the blues is a state of mind. St. Louis blues, boys. Two 
Equations would signify abstract ideas like justice, good, evil. They played on this, a liar. Yes, Mr. Jones. Well, maybe musicians back then just played because it felt good to express themselves. Felt good? Well, like with blues. It started because there was an emotional need for it, to express some disillusionment or or deep desire, sadness. Mr. Jones, the Greeks did not let their emotions rule their music. It was a mathematical exercise to honor the gods, and you will be tested on it. Hey, we're not open yet. Come back at six. Who's that? Some customer salivating. Must have heard about the lamb chops. He's late. I got things to do. I'm gonna go check outside. Casarino. Si. Tutto cosa pronto per stasera? Si, tutto cosa è pronto. Go easy with the garlic, huh? Why is the boss here so early, Dave? The man owns the place, and I'm gonna ask him what he's doing here. Harold, head finished. What are you gonna take all day? Come on. Step. Frank, I told you, we need peppers. What was that? The boss! The boss! Everybody come quick! What? The, the boss! He's been shot! What? Where? Over here! Over here in the door! Mom, my ditch is a wrist. Look, his rings are gone. Mom. Chief, chief, any witnesses? There's a friend of yours, Whitey Garrity. Yes, I know. What about his wife? You know, yeah. Any suspects? Any clues? What happened? I don't talk. Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim. Tia, who did this to you? Looks like a robbery, Mr. Torrio. Why is his shirt torn open? He wore a money belt. The thief got his money. How much was in it? A lot. Stand by. How much was Mr. Calissimo carrying? Two hundred, maybe. That's not a lot. Thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Did he always carry that much money? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Garrity, you don't sleep till you find the killer, you hear me? Big Jim was my friend. I'm handling this case personally. Now, where's the kid who saw someone? Harold, that's you. Uh, a guy stuck his head in the restaurant uh, right before Mr. Colosimo came out of the kitchen. Anybody you've seen before? No. No. I just, uh, I just figured it was a customer, and he thought the place was open, and, and then when he, when he saw it was closed, he, he left. He's sick. Chief, let me take care of the kid. Talk to him later. Hold on. Get the guy's description after the kid loses his lunch. Come on, sit back. Excuse me, he's in charge here. He's in charge. Ernie? Indy! The hell, huh? 
Hey, you look like a waiter. I am a waiter. What are you doing here? Oh, just uh, trying to get a story, you know? Put a potato on my plate. I'm at the Chicago Trib now. Is that the uh, wife who fainted? Yeah. Oh, jeez, see those legs, huh? Nice legs. Josie, you see anything? No, nothing. Nothing? Somebody's got to see something. I was in the kitchen. I... Everybody's in the damn kitchen. Damn kitchen. It's uh, Ben Hecht. <laughs> damn good newspaper, man. You know him? Yeah, he comes in here all the time. And, yeah. Look, uh, you gotta help me out here. See, I'm, uh, freelancing for the Triv now. No story, no money. <laughs> if I don't get money, I go home to Mama and Papa a failure. Well, I don't know anything. Oh, well, maybe you don't, and, uh, maybe you do, huh? Hey, come on, let's get out of here, yeah? yeah? So you don't think it was just a robbery? No. 200 grand and who knows how much in diamonds? Random robbers don't get that lucky. It's probably someone who knew he carried a lot of money. Mm. What are you talking about? Eyes in the book, homeworm. Murder, my boss. Mr. Colissimo? Mm. Wow. Hey, maybe it was a mob hit. Was he into bootlegging? I said it wasn't worth it. The prohibition wouldn't last. His ex-wife got him into the brothel business. He made a fortune. Wait, his ex-wife was a madam? Mm. Hey, you didn't even tell me there was an ex-wife. Have you made a list of the suspects? Yeah. No, 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 no. The ex-wife teaches him everything she knows, makes him rich, and he dumps her, huh? Yeah, a woman scorned seeks revenge. Huh, public eats this up. You gotta get the who, the what, and the why. Wait, but then there's the new wife. Now, she's a lot younger than him, huh? Maybe she wanted the money and not the package it was wrapped in. Then you establish motive and method. You majoring in criminology, Sherlock? No, but I'd like to. I'm in business administration, my father's idea. <laughs> Where'd you get this cracker? He came in the room. But Elliot's right. We can't just jump to conclusions. If you're so smart, Elliot, what would you do? I'd go to the funeral and see who showed up. Big Al, how's it going? Al Brown, this is Ernie and Elliot. Hi. Right. Al's the bartender, Colosimo Speakeasy. Some turnout, huh? There he is, Big Bill Thompson. Big Jim had lots of friends. A couple of congressmen, those two are judges. There's the assistant state's attorney. There's Mr. Camilla, the accountant. How come he looks so nervous? What's up, Fred, eh, Jonesy? Mr. Heck. Nice to see you. Ben Heck, Daily News. Ernie Hemingway, Chicago trip. You new? Freelance. Tough group. You know all the players? That's Obanian. He heads the north side. He wears three guns on him at all times. You uh, have anything against Colosimo? Irish don't got no respect for life. Oh, well, you think he did it? Yeah, that's Caruso. He sings opera. I know. I saw him do Pagliacci. Yeah, me too. I even took the kid. That's Enrico Caruso, the clown you heard singing. Anthony, you remember the night I took it to the opera? Well, I gotta get to the restaurant. Hey, uh, keep your eyes open. Man. I'm gonna go down to the police station. There's gotta be something they're not spilling. What about you, Sherlock? I got a friend in my chemistry class. He works part-time at the morgue. I'm sure he can help us. <laughs> you two must have a lot of laughs. You know, you're not very funny. Watch it, Ernie. Knows jujitsu. Oh, I'm real scared now. I'll see you at the fountain for lunch.
happened and now he's dead. I made him what he was. Do you hear me? Get her out of here. I can raise Georgie, him Georgie, come on. To be with trash like you. Josie. Josie, you read the paper. Yes, ma'am. They say that I did it. That I ordered a hit. If I ordered a hit, that thinning little fluff would be dead. And my Jimmy. I love my Jimmy. the first bullet penetrated behind the right ear. Behind the right ear? That means he was shot from behind. Now, the second bullet penetrated the plaster wall above the front door. Now, my boss figures that by the time the second shot was fired, the victim had probably already fallen. The first shot entering the right cerebellar hemisphere would have killed him instantly. So chances are, Calissimo was looking out the front door peephole. That means the killer must have come up behind him. Someone already in the restaurant. Was that in the newspaper? Uh, I don't read the papers. Now, I get a copy of your notes on combustible elements, right? That's the deal. Come on. Hi, Chicago Trip. I see Chief Garrity. Just a minute will do. Add that to the minutes that those guys want. And tell them to stop eating our donuts. Macaulay. Hey, what do they care? Huh? Nothing's sticking. They all got alibis. Oh, Ben. Yeah. He was at his flower shop arranging a bouquet for a communion party. Hey, what about Jaime Weiss? He was hosting the party for his kid's first communion. The whole Northside gang was there. They're making our job hard on this one. They sure are. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Have another donut? Here, Ham. Lobby, maybe behind a door, maybe in the cloakroom. The cloakroom door was open. Why didn't you say so before? I think it was important. Here's shots of the suspects from the funeral. Hey, what about that guy your waiter friend saw? Think he was the killer? Maybe he hid in the cloakroom and waited for Colosimo. Hey, maybe it was the ex-wife's hitman. You should forget about the ex-wife. She's a battle act, but I believed her when she said she'd have killed Dale Winter before Colosimo. Let's talk to the police. I tried. They won't talk to anyone. We don't have any. All we have are maybes. Hi, Andy. Hi, Susie. Oh, hi. Elliot? Right. <laughs> Elliot. Bye, Andy. Oh, bye, Susie. Well, if she could remember your name, I'm sure she'd be crazy about Shut you. Shut up. OK, where were we? You said Calissimo's usually not in the restaurant that early. Someone must have known he'd be there. Someone who maybe knew how much money he was carrying. And if that someone was waiting in the cloakroom, he must have figured Calissimo was going to come into the lobby. If we figure out who Calissimo was waiting for, we might just find the murderer. If, 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 if my editor doesn't like that word. Look, I'll talk to Harold tonight. He must have given a description of that guy to the police. Wait a minute. Don't you remember Aunt Bessie invited us to dinner? She's making those potato dumplings you like. God, I didn't even get the night off. Oh, great. She slaves over a hot stove and you don't show up. Guys, guys, what? guys, guys, we're talking about murder. Forget Aunt Bessie. That's easy for you to say. You don't have to face her wrath. I gotta get to class. You're late. The place is a mess. Everything needs to be swept. And where's Harold? He's not here? No. He's supposed to be here. Well, he ain't. Would you please get a broom and sweep up? Andy, what are you doing in here? I was just 
sweeping up. Oh, you found my earring. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Haven't you ever thought of asking me out? I'd say yes if you did. We'll talk about it. I'll hold my breath. Issues the New York Times. You think we got the whole New York Times on file? What, are you crazy? You got a telegraph for them. Then they get them on the 20th century limit. How long will it take? About as long as it takes the train to get from New York to Chicago. Fill out one of these forms. the murder. Yeah, this town is violent and getting worse. Uh, I've been thinking I might have to back it up and ship myself over to Europe. Maybe by the time all this shakes down, we won't even have a job. You was getting the place anyway. The wife? She ain't no business, man. She's a singer. Oh, uh, Torio, the nephew's taking over. He told me. I can't figure out why Mr. Colosimo was there so early that day. He was there to pick up a shipment of bootleg. Really? The police know that? What police? That's the word on the street. I have a plan. Yeah, sure. Here's Ellie. I told my Aunt Bessie it was an emergency. This better be good. I know why Colosimo was there early. He was waiting on a shipment of liquor. So it was a mob hit. Now what we have to do is figure out who we're supposed to be doing the delivery. Then we tell the police they can get him for violation of the Volstead Act and murder. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, you guys. Now, why would they kill him if he was a customer? I mean, that's not good business. Maybe it wasn't paying up. He had 200000 on him. Maybe it was personal. How do we find out who was supposed to make the delivery? They keep the liquor in the cellar of the restaurant. Let's go. I left my Egyptian archaeology book inside. I have a test tomorrow. Can I come in and get it? Thanks, Mr. Scott.
Not in the phone book. I told you Cristo Lemonade Company wouldn't be in the phone book. But your $10 is not advertising on billboards either. They ship most of the contraband across Lake Michigan. The police are always raiding the warehouses. What are you doing? Who are you calling? Harbor Master. Howdy. I'm supposed to be meeting the delivery for Cristo Lemonade, but I dropped my ham and cheese and mustard all over the order. If I remember right, I'm going to Warehouse 28. All right, Warehouse 35. Uh, on Pine Street? Right, on Lake Street. Right, appreciate it. What's that for? <laughs> for lying. Good job. I didn't lie. I fabricated. I'm proud of you. Let's go. Go where? Warehouse 35. Well, let's call the police and tell them to go to Warehouse 34. We're just going on a hunch. They're not going to listen to a hunch. Look, if we hand it over to them, and if they follow up, I lose my exclusive. Is that all you care about? Well, what do you want me to care about? Some mobster being rubbed out? Justice upholding the law. Well, let's go before he starts the Pledge of Allegiance. How are we going to get there? Aunt Bessie's car. What? What? <laughs> I promised Aunt Bessie I'd have her car back tomorrow morning. She needs it to go to Junior League. Turn it, turn it. There's someone standing by the front door. Guy looks like 300 pounds. I'll drive around back. <laughs> Let's try the stairs. Oh, we're not going in there. That's why we're here. You'd be breaking and entering. Oh, here. It's locked. Come on. Bingo. There's the office. Come on. Oh, I feel a permanent position as feature writer for the Chicago Tribune column. I need
Perhaps it's their short but perfect life. Something none of us aspire to. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Mr. O'Bannon. We don't want a short but perfect life. Mine was never perfect. I grew up in Little Hill on the north side, near the brothels and saloons. I was a good Catholic boy, but times were tough. I got a job as a singer at McGovern's Cabaret, a den of iniquity. I worked hard to get out of my imperfect past. What were you doing at the Warehouse 35? Uh, sightseeing. Uh, we were on a uh, sightseeing expedition. Right, guys? Right. Right. Roses or tulips? Sir? It's for a funeral. Which would you prefer, Mr. Hemingway? <laughs> well, I'm a sucker for daisies. I remember that. Oh, no need. You're a waiter at Colosimo's restaurant? Yes, sir. May 
God have mercy on his soul. You hear those bells? I was a choir boy at that church. Now I sell flowers to close friends and not so close friends. And I have other business interests such as lemonade. My question is, was someone trying to set me up? Set you up? Cristo Lemonade Company was scheduled to deliver some refreshments to Big Jim that afternoon. Was it delivered? The truck arrived moments after the unfortunate robbery. The driver felt that it would not be in good taste to stop at that point. Everyone was much too busy, what with the police and newspapermen. The delivery was never made. The murderer must have known about the delivery. He must have known the scheduled time. And it was used to lure Coliseum onto the lobby. That's an interesting notion. I could kill you kids, but you're not that important. I had nothing to do with taking a pop at Big Jim. And I don't know who did. So unfortunately, I have no clues to give you. But please, take these and wear them in good health. And with them, take this advice, boyos. No matter what's your business, stay out of mine. That guy is scary. I think we just about got ourselves killed for nothing. For a couple of red carnations. Selling nuts. Hot nuts. How you doing, Mayor? This is my friend Al from New York. Oh, Enjoying yourselves? If you need anything, let me know. Hey, Jonesy. I like that carnation, kid. Make sure the May gets the uh, pasta vaso. All right? We gotta keep him happy. Stay where you are. I was gonna call you. I've got it. Is that Indy? It's Indy. Hey, you guys, you won't believe what I've got. I'll be right there. I saw some of the loot. Al Brown is wearing Colosimo's diamond horseshoe pinky ring. Al Brown ain't his real name. What? Yeah, I had a photo sent from the New York Times. Look at this picture. Colosimo's nephew, Torrio. Look who's with him. Al. Nah, his real name is Capone. Capone? Skipped out of New York town, the murder charge on his head. Came here and he must have taken up the alias Al Brown. He's gotta be our man. Not so simple. I grabbed this off the desk at the warehouse, and I got lucky. Guess who ordered the delivery that afternoon? Torrio. see that. Well, that's very interesting. You boys have been very busy. We tried to get in touch with you, sir. But... And do you have anything else? Well, the photo of Capone and Torrio in New York. Oh, that's very interesting, but uh, circumstantial, if you see what I mean. We told you I was wearing the ring. You just go to the restaurant. Uh, it could be Big Jim's ring, but uh, it could be one like it. But that order, sir, is signed by Torrio. And that, with the other evidence, could certainly begin at least a serious investigation. 
could be, Mr. Ness. What are you doing? This is a game for the big boys. Now take my advice, go back to your school, get yourself a girlfriend, and have fun. You'll have a better chance of getting somewhere with a girl than you will with a police investigation. Now get out of here. I don't want to see any of you again. Wait a minute. You just destroyed the evidence. Police is supposed to catch criminals, not help them get away. Wait a minute. You can't do this. He's not going to do anything. He's dishonest. Someone's got to do something. You got to write about him. Expose him. My word against his. My editor wouldn't go for it. Hemingway. You got a hot tip? Too hot for Chicago, man. Oh. The old who's got who in the pocket? Feels like a real kick in the behind, doesn't it? That's why I'm gonna write a play. Fiction based on fact. Maybe. But at least I can make the good guy win. See you guys. Come on. How can you guys be so calm? I saw this kind of thing in the war. I don't know, coming home to America, I just didn't expect to see it. We can't just accept it, we gotta fight it. Not me. I wanna go to Paris. I don't wanna do this newspaper stuff the rest of my life. Hector's is right. I'll tell my own stories. I gotta get to the restaurant. You're going back to work there? How can you work there knowing what you know? Going there to quit. See you guys. Capone took over Colosimo's operation. That's when the bootleg wars really began. It's tough snowing. Maybe. We'll... The pipe, please, gentlemen. Then you can go back to your little weenie road. Hold it. My pistol is empty, Dr. Jones. I don't like loaded weapons. Pipe belongs to my people. What are we gonna do now? They've got guns. <laughs> They've got the pipe. Well, things can't always be the way you want them to be. <laughs> 